Have you ever thought about the amazing power of praise? Whatever you're going through right now, whatever you're facing right now, whatever is on your mind, whatever's on your heart, I will tell you this, if you can get this tonight, if you can move above what, above what you feel and to get into what you know, and here's what you know. The Bible says in Psalms 150 verse six, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Now you may have been raised in a home where people worship. You may have not been raised in that. Maybe you went to the church where it was the first church of the Frigidaire. It was so cold in there and there was a polar bear behind the pulpit. pit. They just froze, just froze. You know what I'm talking about? And if you ever raised your hand and said, thank you, Jesus, they would have the ushers come and take you out going, we don't do that in here, right? But you were made by God. It's actually more natural than you can know. And here's what concerns me about life sometimes. Can I just get mean one minute? I find people being so much more comfortable in being in the presence of the enemy than they are in the presence of God. And yet the Bible says when you enter his presence with thanksgiving, when you enter his gates with praise and thanksgiving, there's something that is released in you. And I want to give that to you tonight. Jesus said in John 4, 23, true worshipers worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That's the kind of the worship that the Father seeks. Isaiah 29, 13 says, God, these people claim to be mine and praise me with their lips, but they don't mean it. Their hearts are somewhere else. Have you ever tried to praise Jesus when your heart was divided? I can promise you all of us have done that. And one of the things about coming to church and why I encourage you to put worship music on in your home the first thing in the morning, worship music in your car on the way, is because when you begin to bring church with you instead of expecting the church to fill you, life will be totally and completely different in your life. But their hearts are somewhere else, far from me. Their worship of me is just routine, repeated, and without thinking. Now, I don't want to go fleshly for a minute, but I want you to get this. Have you ever had somebody love you lukewarm? You could tell they were with you, but they were really somewhere else. You could tell they were with you at dinner, but their mind was a thousand miles away. Imagine being the God of the universe who is giving breath in your lungs right now, the heartbeat in your body. Everything you have is because he exists. And yet we struggle sometimes to just worship him. Psalms 138 verse 1 in the NIV says, I will praise you, Lord, with my whole heart, with my whole heart. Psalms 95 verse 1 in the TEV translation says, let us praise the Lord and sing for joy to God who protects us. Wow. Wow. I want you to know right now, you were made by God to worship. And I believe this with everything inside of me, church, and I really sense that God is asking us to go a whole nother level in our praise and our worship because when you do this, it's actually an offering to God. When you worship him with your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, your whole strength, what you're saying is, Lord, I want you to purify me so that I can come into your presence. Isaiah looked into the heavenlies and when he saw God, he said, Lord, touch me for I am a man with unclean lips. And God took the coal of heaven and placed it on his lips and he began to cry out, holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. Listen, you can't even worship God unless his spirit fills you. I'm getting ready to do a collection on being spirit filled. Not being filled with this world, but being filled with the Spirit of God. We're afraid of the Holy Spirit. We're afraid of His power. And I want you to know, church, I want you to get so comfortable in His presence, you get uncomfortable out of His presence. Can I get an amen? I want you to go wherever you go and people feel it in your step. There's something different about you. There's something going on inside of you that I don't understand. I believe when we board airplanes and sit down, somebody ought to look over and go, what is on you? 
I'm telling you what's on me is the power and the anointing and the authority of the Holy Spirit. Walk in the light as He is the light. Walk in His Spirit and you will not obey the lust of the flesh. All right, calm down, big boy. So some of you may be saying, well, you know what, Tim, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You, you don't know me. I'm not that kind of guy. I'm, I'm not that kind of girl. I, I, I'm, I, I've never opened my mouth. I'm amazed when the Spirit of God fully invades a person's life, how all of a sudden the meekness and the, and the weakness leaves and there's a strength that comes out. I'm not talking about worshiping God to be seen of men, but I'm talking about worshiping God because you're so surrendered to Him, you don't care what man thinks about you. Can I get an amen? And I believe when we begin to do this, church, we're going to see God do something that we never thought He could do. I know some of you may be looking at me because can I tell you, get used to it, church. We don't have just a bunch of grown up Christians here. We got people that never knew Jesus, never been to church, never been to a Bible study, never even read the Bible. They don't know Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They don't know any of that. But they come in here and here's what they say to me. I love the energy in this place. Ooh, there's an energy. I'm going, what you're talking about is not an energy. You're talking about a person. And that person is the Holy Spirit. And he's a part of the Trinity. And I can tell you, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. There is future. There is hope. There is victory coming our way. That's why, listen to me tonight. If you come in and you're burdened and you're heavy laden. If you've had a week where you've had trials and tests and setbacks and they talk back about you. Come on. Can I get an amen? And you just walk out going, I bless you, Jesus. I give you glory and honor to your name. Great is your faithfulness. Satan hates it. He'll never encourage you to praise God. He'll encourage you, sit down and be quiet. Just don't get too fanatic. Well, he done lost the battle. Because we don't give a hoot about what people think about us. We're going to do everything in decency and order. But I can tell you, I want to give you seven incredible benefits of blessing your life. When you praise God, he guarantees these things will happen in your life. Are you ready? I'm going to give you three tonight, and then we're going to practice. Are you ready? We're going to throw down. I'm going to get crazy. I want you tonight to already start planning, seeing yourself going, woo! Yeah, it's like, boop. Yeah, it's going to be good. And Sunday morning, you're all going to come back, and there's going to be a bunch of new people here, and they're going to see you over in the corner going, woo! And they'll be like, what is going on, man? And it's going to be all right, because everything changes when God steps in the middle of a situation. So this is really kind of simple. It's almost too simple. It's kind of obvious, but here's what I can tell you. Number one, write it down. When you praise God, he lifts your spirit. The Bible says be filled with the spirit of God. You'll find out that there will be a spirit of heaviness on you And you'll begin to praise the Lord and that heaviness will begin to just evaporate around you. You'll be tired. You'll be exhausted. Your body will be worn out. I cannot tell you how many times my body from running during the week is a little tired. And I just come over here and stand in the corner on Sunday morning and and everything inside of me is going, you need coffee. And I'm going, no, I need the presence of Jesus right now to just fill me up. And then all of a sudden I'm energized. You have no idea how many times I've stood at home and went, I don't really feel like going to church. My wife goes, you're going, big boy. I go, why? She says, you're the pastor. Get yourself ready and get out there and get going. And you know what? As soon as I get here, I can be tired. But when I walk in here, and the Bible says, don't forsake yourselves assembling together as some would. Because when you come together, there is something that we share in each other's filling of the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit. Don't come to church full of hatred and bitterness and resentment and rebellion. Come to church filled with the presence of Almighty God. And when you do, praising God lifts my spirit. It'll even make you let out a little whoopee. It'll even let you let out a amen, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And I just want to tell you, it's going to be all right. Just don't worry about it. It's going to be all right. So can I tell you, 
If you came to church tonight exhausted, discouraged, fatigued, in a bad mood, yeah, I said it. Hey. The Bible says, take that attitude, take those thoughts, and just begin to bless the Lord. And watch what happens. You know, when you're bitter and you're mad and you're angry and you're confused, begin to bless him. See, I watch people, and I love church online. I think it's wonderful. But can I tell you, all of you, I know some of you are shut in. I know you can't come, but I just want to beg you, come. Uh, G5 Church Online is really beautiful. But there's something about when you enter a place with other believers, that healing and hope and deliverance and life and passion begins to return and you get discernment and you get wisdom that you can't get any other way. Now, I know you're worshiping at home and I think that's so cool. Matter of fact, I think all of us should turn our houses into sanctuaries. But I do believe there comes a time where we've got to come together and fellowship. It's why the Bible says in the New Testament, do not forsake yourselves of coming together. I encourage you to be involved to be involved. I, I want you to write this statement down. Most people make enough commitment to God to stay frustrated, but not fruitful. Most people make enough a commitment to stay frustrated, but not fruitful. So I know you're smart, and I know a lot of people love to watch TV in their PJs, and I, I know that, but I want to encourage you. A lot of times when you're at home, I want to encourage you because you don't sing like you sing when you come to church. And I want you to begin to sing like you sing in church if you're gonna stay home. And I want you at some point in time to just come and fill it. Get involved. Get the benefit of being involved in the family. And there is something that's going to be released in your life that you cannot even imagine. I know sometimes you're saying, you know what? I feel a little bit tired. You have no idea how many times under the patio somebody comes up to me and says, I almost didn't come, but I came and I got exactly what I needed. If you will sacrifice for God, he will give you what you need, I promise you. So can I tell you, there's a lot of people discouraged. They're broken, that they're hurting. And, uh, you know, we're disappointed. And God just wants us to come together and focus our hearts and minds and our spirits and our desires and our future on him, not on things of this world. Can I get an amen? Yeah, amen. So uh, you ask, what are people looking for? What are people looking for out there? What are people looking for, but they won't tell you they're looking for it? Let me tell you what they're looking for. They're looking for hope. And when you worship Jesus, he turns your despair into hope. He turns your depression into praise. And then he begins to heal your mind and your spirit and he gives you a whole new perspective in life. I know there's a lot going on in this world right now and uh, there's gonna be a lot of people tonight that are going to be depressed about these elections. And I just wanna tell you right now, I don't care which side you're on, I love you. Here's what I can tell you. We need to be seeking Jesus for our nation, for our families, and asking God to give us a revival that will just change the world from the inside out. Can I tell you, if you came tonight and you're feeling a little bit of discouragement, I just wanna encourage you tonight when you go home to read Psalms 42. Psalms 42, verses 5 and 6 says, why am I so discouraged? Have you ever asked yourself that? If you haven't, you've never been in a battle. But if you've been battling, you know how tired you can get and how worried you can get. Because here's what Satan will tell you. Are you ready? It's never going to change. It's never going to get better. It, it, it's going to be this way for the rest of your life, which I call baloney. And I'm telling you, God is going to make a way. 
He's going to turn things around. You have no idea right at G5 right now the miracles that are taking place that people have prayed for for years and years and years. Sons and daughters who are coming home. Can I tell you, I had a friend call me today and he goes, I just want to let you know we've been watching and we see the miracles that are going on down there. And I had a friend of mine, he doesn't really know Jesus that much, but he was in an accident and it crushed his foot. And the doctor told him no less than 10 times, I need to amputate that foot. And he looked at him and said, don't do it. Jesus said, it's not done with you yet. He's going to heal that foot. I got a call today. God healed his foot and he's walking in the way of God. Can I tell you? And so we got so many things that God's doing. Why am I so discouraged, so troubled and upset? Instead, I will instead, write that down, instead, instead of being troubled, discouraged, and upset, and backfighting, and all that garbage I do, instead, instead, God is saying there's an instead in your life. Instead of doing that, I want you to do this. Can I get an amen? Instead, I will put my hope in God, and I will praise him once again as my Savior and my God. When my heart is breaking, I will remember your kindness. Ooh, some of y'all need to put that scripture on your bathroom mirror and you need to begin to declare it over your life and over your home. Listen, when you come to church and you worship him, don't come just to consume. Come to contribute. What do you contribute? I open my mouth with praise and I begin to speak life over other people's lives. I've heard my daughter say while she's leading worship many times, somebody around you doesn't have faith, battle for them. Step in and say, no, Satan, no, not today. You're not going to do it. And I'm going to turn my fear and doubt and complaining into praising. Can I get an amen? I just want to challenge you for seven days instead of complaining and backbiting and fighting and losing all that energy. You're just giving it to Satan. I just want you to encourage to just go, I bless you, Lord. I praise you. I don't know the way, but you know the way. I, I don't know the answer, God, but you have the answer. I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know what you're going to do. I got a text early one morning. Lisa, I hope you don't get mad at me, but Lisa and Jimmy, and she, I could tell she was just so discouraged. They looked at so many houses and, and the last one got turned down. You ever been here? And she texted me and, and, and said, could you please pray? And I felt the spirit of God come up in me. And I said, no, God is about to provide for you in a way you've been faithful, you've honored him, you've tithed, and God's gonna bless you. I know he's gonna bless you. Now they got a beautiful home looking over a golf course. How many of you know when God does it, he does it better. Sometimes he's waiting on a timing and you wanna get ahead of him and you get mad at him, but can you just give God a little space to go to work and what are you gonna do in that space? Well, I don't know what's wrong. Nothing ever goes good for me. Deep despair and agony on me. Deep dark depression excess. Now, if you don't know that song, if you've never heard that song, I just feel so sorry for you. There used to be a show on called Hee Haw and that was one of my favorite songs of the night, you know, and, and I just loved it. Here's what I can tell you. If you will give God space and fill it with praise, even when your body and your mind and your spirit says don't do it. See, this is why giving is so critical. I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna be very transparent with you. I'm a pastor and I've been a tither ever since my daddy taught me to tithe when I was a kid and I would mow grass and I would tithe. This is the first thing I ever did. Very rarely when I tithe do I ever initially feel real good about it. I'm just being honest with you. You may feel really good about it and I'm just really proud of you, but I really struggle. And so let me tell you what I've done. I went to my wife and said, write the check and don't even let me be a part of it. Why? Because I'm gonna do the right thing whether I feel like it or not. And what I realize is that giving is an, actually an offering, a praise to God that says, you gave it to me. See, you think it's yours, but it's never been yours. He gave you the strength, he gave you the job. And right now he's looking and saying, hey, you gonna rob me or you gonna give it back to me? Can I tell you, people come to church and I watch them. 
I'm not being critical, but you're robbing God. Worship him. Let me tell you this, and I'm going to move on, okay? I got to move. You know the scripture, I, I want you to be hot or cold because if you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of your mouth. Do you know what that's really about? It's about how you taste to the world that doesn't know Jesus. And when they can taste and see your commitment to Christ, your love for Jesus. I'm a pastor. I'm also a father. I've got a father's heart. And I had to kind of get involved in somebody's life this week where I said to them, you're so inconsistent in your commitment to God. I don't know how anybody around you knows that you really love Jesus because you can't be inconsistent. You've got to be consistent. You eat almost every day. You do all these things. I'm just encouraging you to praise him every day. I remember your kindness. Here's what he says in this verse. If you're taking notes, write these these words down. Hope, praise, and remember. These three almost always go together. Hope, praise, and remember. I'm going to hope in him. I'm releasing my faith. I'm going to praise him, releasing more faith. And when I remember what God has done, if he did it before, he'll do it again. So I want you to know when you come here and you begin to worship. And I love it, G5. We're getting on fire. We're getting where we're worshiping and we ain't scared. We're not afraid. We're just lifting our voices. Isaiah 61, 3 says, to who all who mourn in Israel... He gives beauty for ashes, joy instead of sadness, and praise instead of despair. What is God saying here? You got a choice. You get to choose right now. Look at that scripture. Do you want beauty or do you want ashes? Do you want joy or do you want sadness? What is it that you want? You get to choose. I don't know about you. As for me and my house, we are going to praise the Lord. When our children were one and two, we taught them to raise their hands and praise them. Parents, I love you. Any parent that ever says to me, well, I'm just going to let my children find it on their own. You have lost your mind. I love you. Because the Bible says train up a child in the way that it should go. And when it's old, it will not depart from it. Can I get an amen? Amen. Number two, are you ready? God helps me sense his presence. God helps me sense his presence. I don't know if you've ever sensed his presence. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation and you just feel God's presence come up in your spirit. The Bible says, enter his gates, enter his presence. That means I've got to make a decision that I'm going to choose to enter something I'm not presently in. Now, as you keep growing in God, here's what God's going to do to you. We're going to talk about this, okay? You're going to be filled with the Spirit of God, and you're going to begin to pray. You're going to begin to utter things that you didn't even know of. You're going to begin to speak of things that you never knew before. But I want you to know, if you look at this, God says, if you will come to me and literally just say this one word. Are you ready? This one word will give you instant entrance into the presence of God. Enter the presence of God. Here it is. Are you ready? Jesus. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, I lean into you. Holy Spirit, have your way. God, I give you my life. Can I tell you, if you're waiting for a feeling, there's probably a good chance you won't get the feeling. But if you will act your way into the feeling by praising them, even when your mind tells you not to, get ready, you're going to enter the presence of God. And wherever the presence of God is, how many of you know there's freedom? How many of you know there's wisdom? How many of you know there's favor? How many of you know there's blessings? See, here's what I want you to do. I don't only want you to come here and worship. 
My daughter has said it over and over to you. You don't need somebody to lead you in worship. You need to lead yourself in worship and lead those around you with your worship. Can I get an amen? So if you want to feel the presence of God, call on his name. Now listen, some of you right now will tell me, Tim, I haven't felt the presence of God in so long. And I want to tell you why you haven't felt it. Because you're allowing something to come between you and him. And he's just saying, will you get rid of that and enter my presence? Will you come here? I guarantee you, God, when you begin to praise him, he becomes more real to you. And when you do it with your whole heart, it changes everything. I didn't say just do it with your mind, even though we're to present our whole bodies, mind, souls, and spirit. So you ask me, Tim, well, how do I praise God with my whole heart when I don't feel like praising God right now? In fact, right now, I don't feel very good about it. Matter of fact, I don't really feel moved to do it. By the way, Tim, right now, I feel a little bit forced even to come to church. I wasn't really in the mood. I was kind of tired. How do I praise God when I feel like that? Here's your answer. And you've heard me say it before. It's easier to act your way into a feeling than feel your way into a action. Do you know that God has given you the ability to worship him when you don't feel him? When I was a little boy, I remember wanting to sense the presence of God. Matter of fact, I can live without anything, but I cannot live and sustain myself without his presence. I need a sense of his presence in my life. I cannot move. I cannot live a day. I cannot go into action. I promise you, as you mature in God, you're going to find yourself spending more and more time in his presence in the secret place. And when you honor him in the secret place where you're praying before you get here, when you're praying in your bedroom, when you're praying on your knees before God, the first thing you're gonna see is your behavior is gonna change. But you're gonna find out that God gets more and more and more comfortable being in your presence. And when you go into his presence, so I just wanna encourage you right now, say, Lord, I just... um, Isaiah 6, 1 through 3 says, I'm going to give up the spirit of heaviness for the spirit of praise. Look, I've got people in this room tonight. I will never tell your situation. But the only thing that has sustained you and made you make it to where you are is that you enter his presence and you stay with him and he stays with you. Psalms 140 verse 13 says, the righteous pray your name, praise your name, and they live in your presence. The righteous praise your name. Do you realize, ladies and gentlemen, when you praise him, you enter his presence. And I want you to do this, church. Not only here, I want you to begin to do it in your home. We have a prayer team here. There's a lot of people on that. Richard and Deb, thank you so much for your commitment to God. Let me tell you, Jennifer, she prays. Ruth Farmer, she prays. There's a lot of people that you come here. Miss Beth, I think you come in and pray early. I'm gonna ask some of you right now that you would ask God to give you a burden to begin to get here maybe 20, 30 minutes early. Come in here and just begin to pray over every seat. Pray over every person that's on their way. Pray the devil doesn't talk them out of coming. Can I hear you? Yeah, just say, God, help us do this. Number three, here's the third benefit, and I close. Praising God enlarges my perception of him. Praising God changes my perception of him. What it does, it makes God bigger in your eyes and your problems smaller. It takes your eyes off of what's around you that you're worried about and threatening over and concerned over, and it enlarges your understanding of who he is. If you can understand that right now, Psalm 69, 30 says, I will praise the name of the Lord with a song and I will magnify him with thanksgiving magnifying is praising. Do you know why we do praise and worship here? Because it magnifies the Lord. 
It makes God bigger in our hearts, our minds, and our spirits than our needs and our fears and our concerns. When God gets bigger than what you're facing, get ready for a miracle in your life. But you and I have got to make the decision that I'm going to magnify him with my mouth and with my lips. Church, listen, when you understand this, get ready because God's about to release something in your life and in your family. You're gonna get promotions. God's gonna bless you. He's gonna raise you up. Just do this. Be willing to deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow him and watch what happens. It all begins with surrender. It all begins with you and I saying, Lord, I give you my life. When you put God bigger in your life, it shrinks your challenges. Can I get an amen? It's just you look at the same situation and go, God, you're going to make it way. Let me tell you what else you'll do. When you're walking through something, it caused Job to say this. What the enemy meant for evil. It, Joseph said the same thing. What the enemy meant for evil, God made it for good. He will change you to understand that a lot of times promotions come through the most weirdest situations of your life. Some of you right now feel like you're under attack. You feel like that God's not for you. You feel like God's not answering. Listen to me. God's moving you, but you've got to get God bigger in your life than the challenges that you're facing. Can I get an amen? amen? Church, when we begin to pray like this, Psalms 145 verse three says, the Lord is great. The Lord is worthy of our highest praise because his greatness is beyond understanding. See, the truth of it is, is most of us have put God in a box. And we put him in that box and we take him off the shelf and we put him back. I'm going to beg you to don't put God in a box. Well, that's my little religious box. And I come on Sunday morning or Tuesday night. I just want to encourage you that every day you live, start out by saying, Lord, I magnify your name. God, you're bigger than anything facing in my life. You're bigger than anything that is opposing me. You're bigger than any situation in my life. Lord, I know this looks awful, but I know right now you are raising me and positioning me for a blessing. You're gonna prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Can I get an amen? And so church, if we'll start believing this, start, start worshiping God in this, here's what I can tell you. The more you worship God and magnify his name, the smaller the issues are going to get in your life. A lot of issues that you and I have in our lives right now, when we begin to worship him, you're going to watch them. They're going to dissolve like salt with water pouring over it. But you've got to fill your mouth with his praise. Right now, here's what I can tell you. When God gets bigger, our problems get smaller. So whatever problem that's got you scared right now, that's got you intimidated, that's got you worried, that's got you fearful. The antidote is to sing about the greatness of God. You are my champion. Giants for see here. Satan doesn't want you to believe that when you open your mouth, miracles can take place in your family. You know that person whose spirit is cantankerous and mean? Watch what God can do when he goes to work in their heart when you praise him. There will be so much more done in praising Jesus than criticizing others. A lot of times people come to me and they go, well, you just don't know this, this person. And this, they blame it on a person. Listen, have you not read this scripture? Scripture? that you fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and pallies of evil. And how do you pull them down? You pull down every stronghold through the word of God and through praising. When you get the word of God inside of you and Satan comes and says, oh, you're not gonna make it. Instead of you going, oh, I'm not gonna make it. You'll go, you'll begin to pray scripture. You'll begin to worship God through scripture. You're not gonna make it. And you're gonna feel the spirit of God come up in you right now and say to you, 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And for an unbeliever, if you're unequally yoked, they're going to get mad at that. Well, we're not going to be able to make it. No, you, you're going to be able to make it. But you're not only just going to make it, you're going to succeed way beyond anything you can think or imagine. I want you to stand with me right now. And I want you to pray with me. And I want to pray for you and with you. Church, can we take these three principles, write them down, put them on your bathroom mirror. Will you do, me, will you do yourself a favor? As a body of believers right now around the world. Will you take these three simple little principles and for the next seven days, will you just begin to apply them in your life? Can we do this? Will you magnify him? Come on up team. Will you magnify him? Will you praise him when everything inside of you says don't praise me? Will you lift your voice? Will you grab your hands? This morning when my wife and I walked, we walked and we just started calling those things that are not as though they are. I'm telling you right now, music is getting ready to come out of G5 that the world has not yet heard yet. Prayer and praise and miracles are going to be a common thing in this environment because we seek him, we honor him, and we're gonna praise him when everything inside of me says don't praise me. We're gonna stop the quarreling, we're gonna stop the fighting in our lives and we're going to begin to praise him. We're gonna do what my wife does whenever she's dealing with me and I'm a little stubborn every now and then. Instead of fighting me, she goes to God and tells me, tells him on me and I'm like, hey, 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 hey. Mm. If you've never accepted Christ, if you've never asked him to be Lord of your life, if you've never had your spirit made new, if you've never had that old flesh taken out of you, if you've never completely surrendered your life to Christ, if you've never, after you've accepted Christ, really begin to walk in sanctification, have you really let the grace of God begin to deal with the areas of your life that God is going, hey, as a man of God, you can no longer do this. As a woman of God, you can no longer do that. I now have asked you, to surrender your life to the Spirit of God. So if you've never asked Him to be Lord of your life, everyone online around the world, just pray this prayer with me right now. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need you. I ask that you'll forgive me. Cleanse me. I'm going to live for you. Give me your Spirit that I can be filled with your heart. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you're now a Christian. You're now new. I'm gonna pray over you right now real quick. By the way, with no one looking around right now, if you would just say, Tim, would you just pray that God will fill me deeply with his spirit right now? If that's you, will you just raise your hands? So Lord, we give you glory and honor and praise. We worship you. I pray right now, Lord, that your presence would fill the hearts and the minds and the souls and the spirit of every human being listening to me. I pray for those that raised their hand and said, God, fill me. Lord, thank you that you promised in your word that if we come to you, you won't turn us away. So Lord, we decrease. I'm praying right now, God. I'm praying right now for every heart under the sound of my voice. No longer will we play safe. No longer will we walk in fear and darkness. No longer will we ever walk in condemnation. We are new creations in Christ Jesus. And we're gonna to begin to lift our hearts. We're gonna to begin to lift our voices. We're gonna be lifting our hands, God, and we're gonna praise you and thank you because worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God. We give you glory and honor and praise. And we right now, Establish your covenant on this earth. We now release the angels of heaven to go to work on the behalf of your people. We give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. Now let's worship together. 